All right, everybody, welcome to our week two. Uh, so, pretty self-explanatory this week. Uh, we have our narrative essay due by the end of the week this Sunday, uh, the 20th. Uh, for instructions on that, please check out the announcement that's been posted for the week. Um, your topic for this, uh, and again, this is based on your exercises, your reading of the SCC chapter, uh, chapter three, I believe it is, uh, and uh, the narrative selections that you read in the reader, uh, the Bonnie Smith Yackel and George Orwell. You could use those for uh, inspiration as well. Uh, the topic for your narrative essay is a particularly life-altering or uh, climactic, pivotal experience in your life. Um, and you might say to yourself, well, hey, I don't really define my life as having had any of those pivotal moments. Uh, I would advise you to think a little harder, uh, think a little more deeply about it. Surely there has been a pivotal moment that has uh, compelled you or made you who you are in some way. I could point to a list of them. As a 34-year-old, uh, I feel as though I've had a lifetime of pivotal moments for good or bad um, that have made me who I am today. And I could certainly write a two-page essay on that particular event. Uh, and so can you, and so will you. Two page minimum, three page max, uh, and keep in mind, guys, this is about five paragraphs, roughly. An introduction, two to three body paragraphs, a conclusion. You are not going over your entire life story. You don't have the space or the time for that. That's why I'm advising you one particular moment. Make sure you are infusing your writing with sensual, or, or sensory, rather, uh, images, uh, have your reader, i.e. me, be able to see and hear and experience, taste, smell, uh, feel uh, what you are experiencing as you are relating this account uh, in your narrative. So why do a narrative? Well, we relate our lives to others and to ourselves through stories. It's why we read stories. It's why we tell stories, to make connections, to give meaning to our lives. Um, so with that in mind, uh, that's why I like starting with the narrative. Plus, we all gravitate towards the events of our own lives. We like, whether we want to admit it or not, we like talking about ourselves. Um, we enjoy telling people, or maybe we just can't help to tell people what's going on in our lives or where we've come from, our experiences, etc. Um, so I think a narrative is a good, is a good place to start uh, uh, a writing uh, series. This is the first of our uh, essays. Now, it's my understanding, Miss Evans tells me that not all of you, uh, e either you don't have a concrete example in your own life or you might want to make one up. Um, so here's my policy with that, or not really so much a policy, but my advice uh, regarding that. To me, if you make something up, you're going to be giving yourself maybe more of a challenge than is necessary. Um, because uh, you're going to run into all sorts of pitfalls because first you have to make the thing up. I mean, that takes effort um, rather than just zeroing in on something that has happened. Uh, so, and there might be structural, logical, or organizational issues that you run into uh, if you just kind of make something up out of thin air. Uh, so I would advise against it. Now, granted, as I don't know any of you individually or personally, uh, if your story has what is called a verisimilitude, the uh, appearance of seeming true uh, to a satisfactory degree, then I'll be none the wiser. Uh, so you could you could pass off something as true to me, and I won't know the difference. Um, now, your story shouldn't be something fantastical or... Uh, space opera, Narnia, Lord of the Rings, uh, nothing involving creatures or uh, sort of uh, supernatural elements. Uh, save that for a creative writing class or a workshop or your own personal time. Uh, this should be, by all accounts, uh, nonfiction. Okay. Uh, kind of like what you read uh, in the Orwell and Bonnie Smith Yackel pieces. Uh, those are relating events of the writer's lives uh, to the reader. Uh, so if you want me to look at anything, uh, remember this essay is due by the end of the week, Sunday the 20th. It's recommended that you give me a draft or a thesis uh, or something if you want to uh, via email 
the first half of the week. If you start sending me things after Wednesday, uh, I'm not going to be able to turn things around to you uh, as reliably as if you would have sent something to me the first half of the week. So I advise you to do that. Um, as, of course, you could talk to Miss Evans. She and I will probably confer over the week as well, see how you guys are doing. Uh, that's all the work that you have this week, is to complete that essay. Uh, the assignments from last week, the SCC exercises, the reader questions, uh, and the no-show assignment, I will have uh, graded and uh, recorded in the gradebook uh, by the end of the week. Usually how it works, guys, is uh, class homework takes within the week after the due date for me to complete and get back to you. Okay. Now for essays, uh, the narrative, descriptive, argumentative, and persuasive, uh, that is a two-week window. Okay. So when you guys turn in your narrative essay this Sunday, the 20th, uh, it'll be uh, two weeks after that. So the very beginning of, of February, um, that, that Sunday, that, that'll be the deadline. Two weeks to return major assignments and a week uh, within which to return uh, classwork, homework type stuff. Uh, also this week, um, there is a feature enabled in Blackboard called blogs. Um, blogs are a good space to just kind of um, share your experiences, your thoughts, opinions, reactions to things we've been reading, uh, to exercises, to assignments. Uh, it's kind of a dress down, more casual space to talk about these things with each other. Uh, of course, that means you need to keep things uh, civil, professional, uh, academic, uh, and not not treat it like a text message space or a Snapchat space or anything like that. Uh, so treat it seriously. Uh, contribute if you want. It's completely voluntarily voluntary. But if you do contribute. Each time you contribute to a blog, and I typically do them every other week, uh, you will get a couple of points added as bonus to your final assignment, your MLA research essay, the argument persuasive at the end of the term. So it behooves you to participate, especially each blog. I mean, you could get like, I don't know, let's say somewhere between two to eight points roughly uh, added to your final essay, which is a, a grade change amount, uh, theoretically, if, if you do multiple blogs, okay? So the blog uh, I will open for this week, and it's just asking you to, uh, again, if you want, it's voluntary, respond to the Orwell Smith Yackel readings. Um, you could even talk about uh, the uh, piece we had to read for the no-show assignment about treating dogs as people increasingly more and more. Uh, your approaches to the assignment, the narrative this week, whatever you got, just to kind of talk to each other and uh, kind of get a, a feel of how the course is going so far. The blog is your space to do that. Uh, so anything you have for me in terms of more specifics uh, about the, the paper and, by the way, how the paper should look, look in the paper format attachment in Blackboard, okay? It's an MLA heading. You'll see the upper left-hand side of the page, upper right-hand side of the page, uh, heading, last name, page number, centered is the title. Uh, you have identifiable paragraphs, an introduction, two to three body paragraphs, uh, using transitions in between those paragraphs to uh, interrelate and correlate your ideas, uh, and a conclusion that restates your thesis and summarizes uh, the main points uh, of your narrative. Okay, and by the way, the thesis for a narrative, um, you, you should try to your best to make it explicit. Uh, it's the last sentence of your introduction. So since we're talking about pivotal life-altering experiences, let's say an example. Uh, perhaps I haven't seen my father in 20 years. He left, this is completely fictional by the way, but just for sake of demonstration, he left when I was uh, an early teenager, and uh, I'm sitting down with my uh, wife and kids about to eat dinner, and... Someone knocks at the door. My youngest daughter goes to open the door, and in comes my father after me not having seen him for 20 years. That moment right there. What do I feel? What's going on in my head? That is my thesis. So when that stranger, let's pretend this is my thesis, when that stranger posing as my father walked into the door, uh, my heart sank. 
Okay, that, that could be the thesis. It kind of keeps us in suspense, but it relates the, the quintessence of that emotional moment. Okay, and then I'm going to spend the time talking about further uh, that moment. Maybe I'll have a little flashback uh, talking about my earlier relationship with, with my father in this case. Um, but I do want to keep it focused around that particular moment. Remember, you're trying to dramatize a moment. Okay, not your life story, a single moment. You only have two pages, so you don't have a lot of space uh, to work with anyway. So try to keep it focused, keep it tight. Uh, as best you can, you want things to be error-free, grammar-free. Check with Miss Evans, check with me. Uh, happy to go over these things with you guys. So uh, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, any further questions, let me know. Email me. Please don't hesitate to email me. Uh, no one has uh, during week one, which is fine, but I, I want us to kind of start getting in the habit of talking to each other and establishing a relationship as best we can, uh, being in a remote uh, kind of relationship like this. But still, reach out to me, guys. I'm here to help. Okay, so, uh, you know, as is clear, go Saints. We'll see what happens. Uh, and uh, enjoy your week. Bye-bye.